This chapter is all about approximations. There are two types of approximations we're going to consider. In this video, we're going to talk about tangent line or linear approximations. Yellowstone Park is not only full of wolves and uh, other animals, but they also have a fairly large population of bisons. And because the park has been pretty well surveyed over the years, we actually have very carefully collected data on the population of bisons dating back from the early 1900s. If you know the population in 1908 and 1909, can we use that information to predict population in further later years? Because we have the data, we will be able to check how close our prediction is to the actual um, real thing. Now, the thing is we only have two points. We're given two points, one in 1908 and one in 1909. So given two points, the only thing we can really construct through them exactly is a line. And it's also the simplest function so that's what we're going to do. We're going to construct the simplest available function given all the possible information and then see how good of a job that does. Okay, so we're going to denote by B of T the number of bisons in year T and we will start our countdown at year 1900. And then given those two points, we're going to construct a line and then calculate the values on the line for later years. Now, once again, if it is possible to draw a picture, I always strongly recommend to draw something because it will give you another way to visualize the information that you're given. So here, the countdown starts at zero. So I know the population in years 1908 and 1909, and it is 95 and then 118. So I have these two points that are actually given to me, I know that it's the exact population in those years. What I'm going to do is construct a line through these two points and then use that line to actually calculate how many bison are there in year 1910, 1911, and so on. Now for the line, I need two pieces of information always. I need a slope, for example, and the point. So first of all, let's figure out the slope here. The slope is always rise over run. So I'm going to have 118 minus 95 divided by 9 minus 8, and that will come out to be 23. So my slope here is 23. Okay, so let's label this. The slope is 23. Now, because we are only actually predicting for the years, let's say, as the problem asks, 1910 through 1915, I don't actually need an equation of a line. I can simply add the slope of 23 and calculate the next couple of years. But we will need to compute with, tang uh, with lines in the future. So for the sake of practice, let's actually construct the full equation of this um, Bison line. Okay, so the equation of a line, remember, in the slope, point slope form looks like this, where we take y naught and x naught to be some specific point and m is our slope, okay? So plug in everything in, we can pick either of these two points to actually use in the equation of line, doesn't matter which one. So plug in one of them in, we're going to have y minus let's say 95 is equal to slope, which is 23, x minus the corresponding x coordinate, so eight. So this is the equation of my line. Now notice that my notation isn't quite right actually, so I went with a notation for the equation of the line in the most general form, but really I have the number of bison being b of t and my independent variable is t. So if I want to rewrite that as the model, my y is b of t, and my x's are actually called t that stand for time. So this is the equation of the linear model. So notice the key words here being, I wanted to construct a linear function, which meant I constructed a line using the two points that I was given. Now I can use this line to compute the population of bison in future years. Um, so let's say this is the next five years, and I do have the exact data for those years uh, from the surveys collecting from the survey information. And I can use my function here to actually compute what my model now will be predicting. 
right? So this is my model and it's hopefully going to predict um, something fairly close to the true values for the next few years. Okay, so if we fill in this table with our model, so let me just make sure I label this. This is using the model um, that we've just calculated, plus 95. And we can see, comparing the numbers, that they're actually fairly close. There's no information in 1914, but all of the numbers that we estimated with are pretty close to the numbers that have been measured. And we can see from the graph here, so my line here was constructed through the points 1908, 1909. And we can see that it models fairly well for the next five years, but then something happens and the line, my model is no longer really representing the data all that well. So what are our choices for years that are further away from 1915? Well, I could recompute a new line at the future points. So for example, I could use the points of, let's say 1915 and 1916 to compute a new line. And that line looks like it will model the next 15, 20 years much better. And that is key with linear approximation. And in fact, that's the key with any approximation. An approximation is going to do a very good job, hopefully, near the point where you've picked it. So we've used the years of 1908 and 1909 to model, which means that our approximation would do a good job approximating the population near 1908 and 1909. But the further we move away from those years, the worse our model becomes. And that is going to be the case in general. No matter what function I have, so let's say I, am try I have a function that looks like this. If I construct a tangent line at some point on that function, my tangent line looks like the function near the point of tangency. So if I zoom in around here, you can see how my tangent line really mimics what my curve looks like. Here, the curve and the line look really, really similar. But the further I move away from the point of tangency, the more different the line and the curve look. So the closer you stay to your point of tangency, the better your approximation is going to be. And this in itself is a very powerful idea though, because it means that no matter what curve you give me, no matter how curvy it is, I can approximate it using a line. Now let's take a look at one particular example. We're going to try to approximate square root of two. We will start by sketching the square root of x function. Um, if you don't remember what it looks like, it's always helpful to plug in some points. So square root of zero is zero, square root of one is one, and the next nice point that we can plug in is square root of four, which is going to be two. So this right here is my function root x, and I'm trying to approximate root two, which is the y-coordinate of this point that corresponds to x equals two right there. Now, the idea being is that I'm going to try to approximate it without using a calculator. Um, so I have to construct a tangent line somewhere near two, and then use the value uh, at x equals two on that line, as opposed to on my curve, which will produce a reasonable approximation as long as my tangent line to begin with was constructed close to two. So for example, if I construct a tangent line somewhere here, so let's say at like, I don't know, 0.3 or something, right? Then at two, the value on my tangent line is up here. So that doesn't look too great because clearly there's a pretty big discrepancy between the value that I want, which is down here, and the value that I get on my tangent line, which is up there. Okay, now let's think about where should I construct my tangent line that will produce a better result. So graphically, once again, the closer to two, the better. However, there's other considerations to keep in mind. So this is my exact value that I'm trying to approximate. Root two up here. Let's write out analytically or algebraically what it is that we're trying to construct. So my tangent line will be y minus y naught, mx minus x naught. 
So again, I'm trying to construct it somewhere near to, but I'm also trying to construct it at a point where I can calculate everything at. So a question that students usually ask is, well, why not construct it at two? And the problem there is if I construct a tangent line at two, then in my tangent line equation here, x is going to be two and y is going to be root two. But I don't know what root two is. That's the exact point, that's the exact value I'm trying to approximate. So I can't construct anything at two because I'm unable to calculate root two. So here we need to think of a point near two where I can figure out the exact value of the function. I can't figure out the exact value at two. What other points near two are there that I can calculate the square root of x exactly at? Well, there's a couple. I can calculate the square root exactly at one and I can calculate the square root exactly at four. Both are pretty near two, but one is closer. So I am going to be constructing my tangent line at one and you can see how this value then, if I plug in two into my approximate line, so this is my approximation, then the value that corresponds to that, this is my approximate value, value is pretty close to my exact value. Like they're barely very far apart, right? And that's of course, because one is close to two. So now let's actually figure out exactly what that approximate value is. So in my equation now, I have picked a point x equals one, and then the corresponding point of y is square root of one, which is one, and I am able to calculate it, that's important. If you ever have to use a calculator in your linear approximation process, it means you've done something wrong. For example, you did not pick a point nice enough. Now, for the slope here, for this m, that's the slope, and that's the slope of the tangent line, which of course is the derivative. So I'm taking the derivative of the function y equals root x, which is x to the power one half. So taking the derivative of that is one over two x to the power negative one half, which is um, square root of x on the bottom. And I am calculating that at x equals one. So don't forget to plug in your point. Your slope has to be an actual number, not a function. So plugging in one into my slope gives me y equals one half, which means that the equation of my line now becomes y minus root one, which is one, equals the slope, which is one half, x minus one. Excellent. So this is the equation of my line right here. Okay, and now of course I'm not interested in the entire line. I am interested in this point on the line right there that corresponds to x equals two. So I'm going to plug in x equals two, plug in x equals two to figure out what the corresponding y value is. Okay, and solving this will give me y equals 1.5. So that means that this is my approximate value for the square root of two. If you use your calculator now, you will notice that square root of two is approximately 1.41, which is pretty close to 1.5. And all we've done is pick a nice point, construct a tangent line and calculate its value at that point. So for that amount of work, this is a pretty good approximation. Now in general, this is the formula that describes a linear approximation. It's the exact same formula we've just seen for the tangent line, but written slightly differently. So the way they, we wrote it on the last slide was like this. So you pick a nice point, nice point A or X naught in this case. The nice point is nice in two ways. First of all, you can evaluate the function value at it exactly. And second of all, it's close to your point of interest. So in this case, let's say this is your X value of interest. And then you're constructing your tangent line at this point A, nice point right here. So there is a nice point with, for example, whole numbers as um, coordinates near X and you've constructed yourself a tangent line. That means now that this is your tangent line approximation, whereas this is your curve or your function. So the next step in the process is, or was, to go up to your 
function value and to your approximation value to figure out which one is which. So the value that corresponds to the chosen x on your function is the exact value. And the value that corresponds to that x value on the tangent line is the approximation. Once again, a graph here is really important because it tells you, for example, in this case, that your approximation is going to be an under approximation because in this case, your tangent line and the points on it lie below the curve. Um, the book always also gives you this formula, which they call linearization. Please do not memorize it. The linear uh, approximation process is exactly what we've just covered. So there is really no need to memorize this formula, which all it is, is we've just moved this one term over to the right-hand side. However, what this formula does say is that the function value at a point x is approximately equal to the tangent line value at some point a. And the closer a is, the better your approximation is going to be.